Hey, everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Gabe Marenzi to take a look at this weekend's UFC fights. The names, well, they're not easy. Hopefully, the winners are easy to predict. What's going on, Gabe? We're ready to rock and roll, uh, Greg. You know what? You need a degree from Rosetta Stone to pronounce uh, some of these names. Uh, but let's get the picks uh, right. Uh, I'm more concerned with the predictions than the pronunciations. Let's roll. Predictions, greater sign pronunciations. Let's begin with Takashi Sato taking on Ramiz Brahimaj. It's Sato that's the favorite over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. He's minus 138 as we record this. Gabe, you like Sato, the favorite here. How come? Yeah, there's going to be some fireworks to uh, to get the party started on a Saturday. We know about the 25-foot octagon as opposed to the 30-footer. Uh, Sato is an aggressive fighter, 15-3, and three, Greg. 7-2 uh, and two in his last nine fights, 2-1 and one in his last three. The sole loss to Bilal Muhammad, who, as we've seen and we saw last week, is a world-class fighter. No shame at all in losing to Bilal Muhammad. You want to talk about destruction. His last eight fights have failed to uh, to go to the judges' uh, scorecard, all right? So uh, Saddle comes in here looking to take care of business and looking to finish you. He's more of a striker. He's more of a bruising, powerful, you know, traditional uh, fighter. Brie Mahaj is going to be looking uh, for the submission, and I don't think he's going to find it. I can tell you that eight of his 10 fights have got under the number as well. You guys will see. I'm more of an over better because you get plus money on rolling the dice, on taking over uh, over round props in the UFC. But in this fight, Greg, I don't see it uh, going to distance. I think somebody's going to get stopped, and I think Sato's going to be the one to do the stopping. So I'm going to lay the price uh, with Sato here, and I'm going to go under two and a half rounds. Not over, under two and a half rounds. I expect Sato to win this fight before the two and a half round uh, mark. So we're used to Gabe normally taking the over in the rounds, not in this fight. He's banking on Sato. He's banking on the under two and a half rounds. Sato does his job and wins this fight early. Let's move on to another fight here. Jordan Griffin taking on Yusef Zalal. In both these fight, the, both these fighters are, are coming in hot. You expect both fighters uh, to put up a good fight. Could be uh, an early fight of the night candidate here, Gabe. Who do you like? Well, if you guys re remember... Uh, we were on Jordan Griffin a couple of weeks ago, uh, but his opponent uh, failed to make uh, weight. Uh, so he's, um, you know, he's been in the bullpen, so to speak, awaiting to get back into the octagon. I actually like this about uh, Griffin. It's interesting because against Minner, he was like, uh, like a minus 225, a minus 230 favorite. People aren't so sure. Uh, this time around. They look at Griffin, they see a 30-year-old fighter. They see an 18-7 and seven, uh, fighter. And you look at Zalal, comes in seven years younger, Greg, 8-2 and two, uh, record versus a 30-year-old with an 18-7 and seven, uh, record. But let's look at who they've fought in, uh, before. You look at Griffin, man. The guy's been in there with Chas Kelly. He's been in there with Dan Ige. He's been in there with world-class fighters uh, before. And no respect against, uh, against Zalal, but I think uh, Griffin, the, I think the experience is going to be the difference uh, here. Often, you know, it's, it's a young man's sport, Greg. Let's not uh, fool ourselves. But sometimes you can be too young. And I think that Griffin's been around long enough in his career that he's not going to let this opportunity get away from him. He got on Dana White's Contender Series. He took care of business. He's taking care of business in the UFC uh, as well. I, th I think this is a winnable fight uh, for him. Listen, the matchmaking is great on this card. They're all very evenly matched uh, fighters, uh, Greg. Uh, but I think we're getting a fair price on Griffin here. And I think his wrestling and his scrambling is going to be the difference. Give me Griffin. Very fair price, minus 106. As we said, this is going to be a good fight. Griffin's been waiting in the wings to uh, finally have about, he's 30 years old. He needs a victory. And, and hopefully at this point, he gets it for us. A good price uh, for Gabe Morenci. And let's get it on. Let's get it in to me. on the FanDuel Sportsbook. And, you know, to me, Greg, I just want to stress the big difference here is, like, we talk about this. And this is so I'm going to sort of teach you uh, how to fish and not just give you some fish and chips <laughs> right now. Uh, but don't just be fooled by records, guys. You can look at a record and go, oh, man, this guy's 12 and 2 and this guy's 18 and 7. Yeah, who did they fight? You know, a couple of fights ago, Zalal's uh, opponent, Greg, he had a record of 1 and 3, Okay. Uh, he had a record of one and three. Four fights, one and three. The guy was fighting tomato cans. So, yeah, he's got an impressive record. Now he's in here against a guy with seven losses, but it's actually fought in real UFC fighters before. Give me Jordan Griffin, especially uh, uh, do I want to bet against a guy named Jordan right now? No. <laughs> Give me Jordan Griffin. Let's go. <laughs> 
Jordan Griffin certainly no tomato can. He has some impressive UFC fights in his past. We'll see what he can do this weekend. Up next, it's Kay Hansen taking on Jin Yu Fry and Fry. Well, she is the underdog here, plus 138 at the Pandos Sports. But we gave you like to throw in those underdogs when going over some of these fights that you're placing your money on. Fry is one of those fighters. I tell you what, Greg, listen, I don't make the numbers, right? I just break down the fights. And I tell you guys on a weekly basis uh, this, that when I look at a fight, I'm picking the winner. I'm not betting the number. I find you can get yourself in trouble. You can say, well, you know what? I don't really think she's going to win the fight, or I really don't think he's going to win the fight. But, man, it's plus 175. Well, there's no value if, if the fighter didn't win the fight. So sometimes I'll like the favorite. Sometimes I'll like the underdog. And I'm going to be honest, and I respect, I respect the odds makers, okay? I don't get the number on this one. I don't really understand the number on this. As far as th this fight was made on extremely short notice. So both fighters are coming in here on short notice. Kay Hansen, she's not allowed basically into the casinos after this uh, fight, Greg. She's 20 years old. She's 20 years old. She's a good fighter. She's a good young fighter. She's fought in an Invicta. She's being fast-tracked, Greg. The fact of the matter is, due to the pandemic, she's been fast-tracked to a deal in the UFC. She's not quite ready uh, for this, in my opinion. Like, she's 20 years old, and it's not like she's 9-0 and or something, Greg. And like, oh, she's a phenom. She's 6-3, and three, bro. All right? She's a scrapper. She's tough. She's 20 years old. They're, they're rolling her out there, and she's ready to rock. Okay? But let's not kid ourselves. If not for the pandemic right now and the fact that the UFC... I mean, like, let's look, Greg. They're using the same fighters every couple of weeks now. They're having a hard time getting fighters into the building. She was willing and able to show up and fight. Now, I'm not saying she's coming off the street. She's very talented, but she's 20 years old. Now, you're meeting a fighter in Fry, 35 years old. So do you want the, the wily vet or do you want the youngster? In the fight game, Greg, there's a difference between being the younger, stronger opponent and just sort of being overmatched a little bit. And I think that, we're, you know, Fry is a former champion, man. We're talking about the former Adam Wade Invicta champion. We're talking about a woman that's been in there with world-class fighters before. She also has a gas tank, man. She's been in deep wars before. She's gone the distance before in championship fights. To me, the experience is a big, big factor here. And I put some research, a little deeper research uh, into this fight. I was watching some tape and some old fights of Hanson and uh, Fry as well. I just think Fry's experience, I think her stand-up, her fight IQ is going to be a little bit too much for the 20-year-old making her UFC debut. Normally, it doesn't end well for, for kids to make the debut like this. Now you throw in short notice against the former Invicta champion. I don't understand the number here. Give me the underdog, plus 138, and the former Invicta champ. I get it. Normally, you want to go with the young phenom, but Kay Hansen's not necessarily a young phenom. The record isn't outstanding by any means. And Fry a former champion. Fry is the bet. And getting plus money over at FanDuel, well, that one is kind of a no-brainer. One last fight we want to talk about, and that's Dustin Poirier, the Diamond, taking on Dan Hooker. Hooker is a heavy underdog at plus 184, while the Diamond's at minus 230. Poirier's got some French in him, Gabe. You got to go with him. Yeah, he's got the, the crazy Cajun. Crazy Cajun. And I'll tell you what, he's not called the Diamond for nothing, all right? Some fighters don't live up to their nickname. This guy does because he shines all the time. Great fighter, Greg. Great, great fighter. You know, I was thinking about this fight, and I was thinking to myself, I'm like, Dustin Poirier might be, he might be the best fighter in sort of modern UFC history, let's say over the last, like, decade, that hasn't been a champion before. Uh, but I'm wrong. He has been a champion before. He's been an interim uh, champion, but so is everybody else. Where's my interim belt, actually? So it's, it's around here somewhere. No, no, I don't, want, I don't want to insult any of the fighters. They're all tough. But he was briefly an interim champ, and then he lost to Khabib uh, after the fact. Um, so whatever. And there's been a lot of interim champs as of late. But Dustin, I'm telling you guys, since the UFC has come back, and it came back that first fight, it was against Justin Gaethje and Tony Ferguson, and we were all pretty excited for it. To me, this is the coolest fight since then. This is the coolest fight since then. This is great stuff. And oh, yeah, by the way, Dustin Poirier beat Justin Gaethje, bro. That's how good Dustin uh, Poirier actually is. So you look at Poirier, 4-1 in his last five fights, 
wins against Eddie Alvarez, wins against Justin Gaethje, wins against Anthony uh, Pettis, uh, wins against Max Holloway. The only loss was to a guy, what's, I don't know, maybe you guys have heard of him before. His name's Khabib. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, maybe the greatest fighter in the history of mixed martial arts, Khabib. So in his last five fights, that's the only fight uh, that he lost. Take it on Dan Hooker. Now, I'll tell you what. Dan Hooker, Greg, is every bit as tough as a dude named Dan Hooker from New Zealand would expect to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you hear it in Dan Hooker, you're like, oh, you know, let me hear this guy's piece of work. And in New Zealand, you're like, oh, yeah, that's Dan Hooker over there. Dan Hooker's tough, bro. <laughs> All right? Dan Hooker's a tough dude. Seven and one in his last uh, eight fights. And he does have some name wins. All right? He's got a couple of, you know, name brand wins. Gilbert Burns, as we see, fighting for a championship right now. He's beating him. He beat uh, Paul Felder. How about this, Greg? We're busting out some stats and some trends here. This is an incredible statistic and fact. I saw it, and I was like, no, nah, really? Uh, let me back this up. And it's true. Um, Dan Hooker got into a bloody war with Paul Felder. Great fight. Very entertaining fight. Last fight, all right? Paul Felder's lost five times in his career, Greg. Every fighter that's beaten Paul Felder has lost his next fight after. Pretty interesting. Five professional losses, five fighters have beaten Paul Felder. They're 0-5 after they play Paul Felder. It's almost like, you know, when teams suck after they play the Baltimore Ravens or the Steelers, they're all beat up. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, you fight Paul Felder, you might beat him, but you're not winning your next fight. 0-5, I thought I'd throw that out there. I like Pori already here, listen. Hooker was sort of a guy that was, you know, like these Aussies and the Brits and the Kiwis. They come in. They're scrappers. They're really game guys. They've got a ton of heart, but they're not the most skilled guys. All right? He was like three and three in the octagon. Suddenly, Hooker's found something, man, and he's been in a real zone. He sort of, you know, it's that he's hitting his peak right now in his, in his early 30s here. But the fact of the matter is Poirier is just that good. All right? If not for a Conor McGregor, if not for a Khabib, if not for the elite of the elite of the elite, Dustin Poirier would be a longtime champion right now. He's that good, and I, I, to me, he's just in a different class, and he has a different level uh, than Hooker. Now, you look at you look at uh, Dustin Poirier, man. He cuts you up fast, Greg. He looks to finish fights fast, man. Like, he looks for finishes, this dude. He's an aggressive fighter. But doesn't mean that he hasn't been in wars before, all right? And he has gotten into bloody wars uh, before. And I think we're going to roll the dice uh, here, man. We saw Poirier and Holloway uh, get into a vicious uh, battle. We saw Felder and, and Hooker get into a vicious 25-minute uh, war before. Both these guys can finish you, but they both got so much heart, I don't see it happening I think Poirier is just going to sort of beat the crap out of Hooker for 25 minutes. But Hooker's going to show how tough he is. And he's going to get some shots in, too. We're going to have a 25-minute battle. And we're getting plus 198 that this goes over four and a half rounds, Greg. So give me Dustin Poirier to win the fight. And give me over four and a half rounds. And if it doesn't get to the four and a half, it's because Poirier finishes him. We're going to bet Poirier. We'll also have Poirier in our parlays as well. But I like this fight to go over four and a half at plus 198. Nice value there. A tough, tough fight here between two battlers. But you gave some great stats. Poirier, one of the better fighters in the UFC, as hot as anybody, like you said. This is a good battle, one you're looking forward to. Two brutes head-to-head. -head. Some of those stats, man. Five, five losses for Felder. Five opponents that have lost their next fight. That's an awesome stat, man. I'm taking that one to the bank. Poirier, the guy here that you're betting on, minus 230 at the Pando Sportsbook, over four and a half rounds. You get that at plus 198. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Gabe, we appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Always a pleasure, guys. May the winners be yours. Absolutely. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the fights. And we'll see you back here next week for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.